And welcome everyone to best practices for a successful InfoPath migration and easy transition to Nitro Studio given by Crow Canyon Software. Thank you for taking the time out today to see this and review this important subject. A lot of people are in a position where they have InfoPath forms that were developed and now they have to consider how to move off of InfoPath to a new solution. And we'll go over best practices and some possible options for moving off of InfoPath and where to go with that based on our experience here at Crow Canyon Software. I am Scott Restivo, President and CEO of Crow Canyon Software. We have been, let's see, I will be giving the presentation today, and but uh, will be available in your chat, in your webinar window, available for questions. If you have any questions, you can put them in there and we will try and answer them during the webinar, but if we can't get to them during the webinar, we'll uh, answer after. So please be sure to uh, hit us up with any questions. We'll get to them as we can and work at it from there. Uh, this topic usually raises a lot of questions. And so, you know, it's good to have discussions and go into further depth as to according to what your particular needs. So this is part of a webinar series we're doing in Q1. This is the first one in January, then we'll do one in February and March. This one is on best practices. There'll be one on February on automating business processes with Nitro Studio. Nitro Studio is our software program. We'll only delve into that a little bit today. Uh, we'll mostly focus on best practices, but in the February webinar, we'll go into Nitro Studio forms workflows in much more depth and concentrate on that. And then in March, we'll take a look at uh, this, what Microsoft puts out with the Power Platform. It, 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 Microsoft aggressively promotes it, but there are some limitations and costs that are important to consider when thinking of that as a InfoPath replacement uh, option. So we'll go into that in March. And those, so it should be quite a nice series of webinars coming up to help you uh, get from InfoPath to a new solution as easily and as smoothly as possible. And that's what our goal is here, to help you do that. We also have a couple of pieces of literature you can download from this webinar. Um, they're also up on our website. We have also an ebook. An ebook, now no, that has been gated, meaning that you have to put in your email address. But in this case, since you joined this webinar, we either have sent that to you already or we will send it to you after this, uh, after the webinar. Uh, also, after the webinar, we'll have a recording available of this webinar we're giving right now as well as uh, follow up with some emails and see how how you know your InfoPath migration project is going. And again, I just want to re reiterate that there is a place to put questions in the question box, and we'll get to them as we can during this webinar. So some of you may not know Crow Canyon Software. Others have already been customers for a long time, but I'll go over very briefly here. We've been in business 20 years, doing business process automation on the Microsoft platform. We've been in the SharePoint space for well over 12 years, way all, going all the way back to 2007 and before. And what we produce here is a set of business applications that are out of the box solutions like help desk, asset management, purchasing, onboarding, all built in the SharePoint and Office 365 spaces. And by that, I mean SharePoint on-premises, 2013, 2016, 2019, as well as Office 365, SharePoint online. And it takes advantage of all the capabilities that are provided by SharePoint and by Office 365 to produce these business applications. Like I mentioned, help desk, asset management, purchasing, onboarding. And we have a list of those. And we'll, um, on our website, you can see a list and, and um, see which ones might apply to your particular situation or you're interested in. We also produce the Nitro Studio, which is a forms and workflow solution for SharePoint and Office 365. And it provides a powerful forms designer, a workflow engine, and gives you the ability to create and automate, create applications and automate business processes. And you'll see more about that as we go into our February webinar, and we'll touch on it a bit today. And we also do custom solutions uh, based on SharePoint Office 365 that people come to us with their needs, and we, with their needs, their requirements, their, you know, uh, their documents on what they want to automate, and then we help them build that for them. So. This one will focus on, this webinar, focus on the best practices and really about moving from InfoPath to some solution. Of course, we sell Nitro Studio, so we talk a lot about Nitro Studio as the way to go, but these principles apply in general to matter whatever solution you're going to. And the most important one is the time is now. Microsoft ended development in 2013, so we're seven years behind right now, you know, from their time of end in development, seven years. 
and people still are uh, using InfoPath, of course, but the thing is it's time to move off it and not wait to the last minute. This says it's supported until 2026, you know, at the very, you see down here at the bottom of the slide is uh, information about when they're into mainstream and extended support. So mainstream support for 2013 really ends up just about a year and a half. We don't, it's not really that much time and a project of InfoPath migration will take some time to put in place and move along and uh, get, get, get the new system up and running. So the time is really now. Also, even if it's even if it's still supported, new features are not being added, and they they don't guarantee that future enhancements to SharePoint Office 365 won't kick InfoPath out. You know, some process or some function of InfoPath it'll it'll uh, it'll, it'll kick it out and not not work anymore. The reasons they deprecated it are are many, and many of you probably know know that already. It's just an old technology not adapted to the cloud and cloud and mobile world we now uh, live in. So what I uh, want to talk about here is that InfoPath is really old technology. It's being phased out. Even if organizations still didn't want to, uh, if it, even if it wasn't being phased out, organizations still want to move off this old technology. Now, I said that InfoPath came out in 2003, was developed to 2013. And I went back, you know, the way back clock and did a little, let, let's take a look here. What I want to show you is how outdated this uh, software is. This is when the iPod was released. 2001. The iPhone was released in 2007. And Amazon Web Service, Cloud Service, started in 2006. And of course, Azure is about the same time. So if you think about those dates, when they came out in 2003 with this technology, mobile, like the iPhone particularly represents, and cloud, like Amazon Web Services or Azure, were really either non existent or just getting going. So Microsoft did not build InfoPath as adapted to the cloud and mobile world that we now operate in. So much has changed since the iPhone came out, since the cloud services are available, and InfoPath just couldn't keep up. So Microsoft eventually just said, look, we're just not gonna, we, we can't retrofit it, it's not gonna work. So they just you know kept it going on life support more or less, but uh, it lacks not mobile friendly, lacks mobile design, it has limited cap capability with latest browsers, it's outdated, clunky, XSN, XML technology. Microsoft, as I said, stopped development over seven years ago, and as new web services and data sources and technologies come out for connectivity, it's being left way in the dust. So really, the time is to move off it. Again, it's my, the, one of the main points is now, and get the project rolling, and hopefully that's why you joined this webinar, because that is what you're seeing as, uh, as the way forward. So how do you do it? You know, okay, we got that settled. We know we got to move off it. Now, how do we do it? Well, we're going to look at some of the best practices. What are the best practices to move from InfoPath to Nitro Studio as smoothly, as efficiently as possible? Now, this is from the ebook, so we're talking about Nitro Studio, but really, what are the best practices to move off InfoPath to go to any solution? And that's what we want to consider the higher level principles in this, in this webinar. Well, the first one is rule number one. There really is no rule number two, but no, rule number one here is stop creating InfoPath forms. You're just digging a bigger hole because anything you do right now in InfoPath, you're just going to have to replace. And I know it may be easy, quick and easy. You might know how to do an InfoPath form and the need is immediate, but really it's time to stop creating InfoPath forms. There's a, we'll send you a link to a blog that where all these MVPs were saying, no, don't do it. Don't, don't do any more InfoPath. Just stop right now. It's kind of a funny collection of videos. I won't show it right now, but uh, we can send you the link to this blog where all these MVPs from Microsoft are saying, no, don't do it. Stop right now. Don't do any more info pass for it. It's kind of funny. But it's the, what the point they're making is that you're just creating more work for yourself. So that's the first thing. And stop all of that. There really is no rule tool. I wish put rule number one, stop creating info path forms. Very important. Okay. Now the thing is, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, move off of InfoPath to a new solution, it isn't like you just take A and, and move it over here to B. You can, you can rethink a little that now that we have these new technologies of cloud and mobile, how can we incorporate that into the business process that was done in InfoPath where it was insufficiently uh, able to do mobile devices and insufficiently able to do uh, 
insufficiently able to do uh, cloud, you know, connectivity. So you look at it, you know, it said don't blindly replicate them, but look at the terms of solution. This is a this is an important principle. Think of solutions. What's the business purpose? What was the InfoPass forum solving? What are new ways we can solve it with the technology now available? Mobile options, modern UI and SharePoint and Office 365, more evolved and extensive database integrations. There's now portal interfaces and intranets. Intranets were just barely beginning in the early 2000s. You know? AI, now there's AI services are coming out more like chatbots, natural language processing. So the solution cannot be just, should not be just to take InfoPath from A to B, but also revive or review or reassess the whole, whole uh, solution you're doing and say, what is a better way we can do it using the new technologies that are available? And a lot of times uh, you now have a mobile workforce or there's some cloud-based connectivity that's needed that InfoPath was just not allowing. So therefore, you know, you can really get a benefit of moving off InfoPath, providing more efficiency and better capabilities than you have on, on it. Even though there's a cost to moving and cost to migrating off InfoPath, you can recover, your business can recover that cost by implementing upgraded solutions and more modern technologies. And we see that quite often. And you go into a mobile. Mobile alone will allow field service people, perhaps if you're using, if you have field service people or any mobile, mobile uh, employees to interact with forms that were not possible or very difficult to do. I mean, you can do it in InfoPath, but it's very difficult. Okay, so that's just one point I want to make is look at solutions, not just the forms and not just workflows, but what's the solution we're trying to do here? No, we're trying to, to uh, do here, so let's go. But what we also have run into is that there are some cases where an exact replication of the form is needed. And I just want to point this out because there are some cases where every box has to be in the exact same location it was before. In that case, okay, the form solution, like such as Nitro Studio, can emulate that and then just take an info path form and replicating it in the in the uh, more modern, more updated uh, technology, like uh, you know Nitro Studio or some other solution. But it may need exact replication because you have regulatory requirements. You know the industry has certain uh, governmental or corporate standards it has to adhere to, or it could have been designed by a committee and they don't want to go through a whole committee process to redesign it. Or it could be also that if you move anything around on the form or make changes, there's training costs, not only retraining uh, people, but also um, uh, rewriting documentation could be could be a necessity. So th that's one thing you want to consider. Does it, is exact replication needed? It's better if it's not, that you could be more flexible, but some cases you're locked in and you can't do anything about it except uh, replicate what's, what's already uh, there. Um, and it's interesting how that is. And you know, you can see if you do have to retrain people, it could be hundreds or a thousand people you have to retrain, could be a high cost. So you want to replicate, in that case, replicate the form just as it is. What, now, one other thing that comes up in an InfoPath migration to consider is, is that uh, can you automatically transfer? Is it, isn't there some magic button I can push that will just automatically move everything over from uh, the old system to, you know, from InfoPath to the new system? Can I just, you know, magically do this so that there is, uh, uh, you know, I don't have to, it's a lot less work. Well, the, the problem is it's not, I and mean, there is no magic button. The InfoPath technology is an older technology, very complex, that does not translate well to the newer technology. They're very different technologies that you're talking about when you have uh, different programming languages, different models, different systems. So let's look at these particular aspects of it, forms, data, and workflows. Can the UI of the InfoPath forms be automatically converted to a modern form solution such as Nitro Studio? The modern technology is so different from the info, older InfoPath technology, which again was put in place in 2003, you know, up until 2013. It's just not, it's just, the, the structure is, there's no way to interpret that structure in a way that comes out making sense in the new form. People have tried this, they have gone down this path, and what happens is it ends up being more work to adjust the form with a kind of clunky uh, replica of it in the new solution than it is just to recreate, recreate the form from scratch uh, in the new solution. It's not really from scratch because you're reading off the InfoPath form and you know what fields and data it should have, you know, what, what, what drop list and text box is and all that. But you're, you are, uh, you, are um, uh, you know, so it's not really from scratch, but what you are doing is, you know, recreating it 
is the easiest way in the new solution than to try and migrate data over and have it all messed up and have to readjust everything. It really doesn't, it doesn't work very well at all to do that. So most people have started, you know, some other companies have started that and then abandoned those projects and just said, well, we're just going to have to recreate it uh, from scratch. Also, recreating it from scratch gives you the opportunity to revise it. Unless that, like I talked about, exact replication is needed, it also gives you the opportunity at that point to readjust. Maybe what was done years ago is no longer uh, appropriate now in terms of the forms design and you want to change it. Or maybe there's some things with the modern UI or mobile that are more appropriate. So, you know, in a sense, you have to ask the question, do you even want to migrate it exactly as it is over like that? Yeah. So in a way, recreating from scratch gives you a new opportunity to uh, create it in a way that is more appropriate for the current uh, technologies in the current time frame, you know, 2020, not, 20, to, not 2003. What about data? Can data be in the forms be transferred over? Yes, data is data. Data can be moved from uh, you know, InfoPath repository to uh, SharePoint list. There are tools that do it. We have a partner, uh, Fusion No Code in Denmark, that does does this kind of thing where they'll export it out and then put it into a SharePoint list. Now, that's just data. The data is there. It's you know, uh, it's not represented in any form until you build the form. Also, the data may miss some of the connections. Say you have an associated a, a list associated with another list or people associated with a form and stuff. So there, there could be some adjusting, but if you want to keep the data for historical purposes, and uh, if it's simple data, maybe you can move it over and just put a new uh, new form on it and it'll work. But that's a case where everybody's situation is a little different, whether they need to move the data, whether it's better to archive it, whether it's, you know, these are the things that uh, everybody's situation, InfoPath migration is a little bit different and how to approach it depends on your particular circumstances and not only, that on the particular process and form that you're using. So it's kind of a one, one, one by one kind of consideration. Should we, or is it worth moving the data is it, or just start from scratch and leave that as a historical repository or export it out to a database and if anyone needs to go get it, we can. It's surprising how often that data, we think we need it, but it really isn't. And it might be just you want to store it for auditing or historical purposes, but really people rarely need to access it if ever. What about the workflows? Well, workflows, no. They cannot be transported, transferred, transferred over at all. They're completely different. They're a logic scheme that's set inside of some kind of info path technology, and they can't be uh, migrated over. So really, you're kind of stuck bi building this whole thing from scratch. You have the form designs that you saw in InfoPath. So you can kind of visually you know, compare one to the other as you create it in a new solution and get more facile with the new solution, more able to create the form quickly. You can look at the info path and then create it over here in the new solution and create, um, you know, make any changes you want and new, new capabilities. Uh, the data, well, you, you know, the new form will start building up a new set of data. If you do want to move the old data in, you can look at that project and see what's involved and workflows. You just have to read, you know, rebuild from scratch anyway in the new solution. Okay. So let's go move on here. Uh, one of another important principle and best practice in InfoPath migration is to involve the use, end users. Well, it sounds sounds obvious, but you know, it's, I just want to put it in there because it's easy to overlook when you get into the uh, design phase. Of, well, who's using this? So it's important to get uh, the end users involved in designing and testing, and uh, maybe you'll get a chance to simplify the form because now you can have a better drop list or more database connectivity or something. You know, how can you make the form uh, you know, simplify, simple and easy to use? You might have a portal interface for uh, one where the users enter it and then a more complex interface where staff has to engage with the, with the form and make you know, approvals and other decisions and status checks and all that. So maybe there's a nice simple form for the user to enter in the information and initiate the request or initiate the process, but then more complex. So things like that that can be considered in designing the form. You also can do uh, the dynamic design. You can pre-fill information. You can, uh, there's a lot with, I don't know if you have to, have to uh, consider accessibility issues and ADA uh, requirements, all kinds of things like that. And design is involved the users. And then testing the same thing. You want to make sure you test it over and over again, especially when you do an InfoPath migration and you start first starting out with a new form. You want to make sure those projects are very successful so that people can jump on board and uh, say, okay, this is going to be a good thing moving off InfoPath. A lot of people are like, oh, we use that form for 10, maybe 15 years. Why do we have to change? And there's sort of a resistance and uh, organizational inertia 
as it's called, and a sort of inertia that sets in, uh, you know, in a rut. And so, um, again, in, again, the first project successful and showing it as a very attractive, simpler form that's a positive for the company really helps a lot to move uh, the project along and get buy-in for further InfoPath migration uh, efforts. So, so just incorporate the users throughout the whole process, get user feedback, and keep keep them involved. And there's different ways you can do testing, you know, user acceptance testing, you can do testing internally in the dev team, and then bring it out to a limited set of users, uh, get feedback, you know, uh, all that. And then even after rollout, is to keep an important eye on uh, any kind of uh, feedback that may come in from users as to what can be changed and what can be uh, modified. So, it's, you know, by the within a I don't know, month, month or so, two months at the most, maybe it settles into a nice, nice, uh, easy rhythm and everything is settled and the users are happy with the new new form and made that adjustment, which is so important to do. So those are all kinds of considerations that go on with this. Uh, the next is, uh, okay, and these are all like kind of principles or practices that are, you know, good to consider. And this is all in the ebook. So if you when you get the ebook, you're going to find uh, that this plus a lot more information about it. Of course, you can always talk to us directly about a migration project, but talk to Crow Canyon software. All right, this other, another practice, another consideration is the scope of the project. This means how much effort do you want to put in? Well, if it's incremental and you're just doing one or two forms, you don't want to go through, go through the whole yada yada of developing a whole, uh, you know, migration project and make a, with a lot of fanfare. It can be just a simple, you know, get a new solution in and just move the form over do some user acceptance testing, you know, get some feedback, and, you know, there you go. It's a, there's no, it may be no company-wide initiative to replace all the forms, but one department or group wants to, wants to move over, right? So that's an incremental approach, but when you go into a full replacement, you have to consider a lot more uh, factors, and sometimes they kind of, isn't a clean line between the two, because the incremental might lead to a full replacement. The first part of full replacement might be the incremental, but really it's just, you know, determine the scope, you want to match your effort to the scope of it, of, of the project, um, and not uh, go overboard if it's just a simple project. If it's a if it's a small project, then you can just usually do it uh, in a fairly short period of time, and um, then that could either be used, that could be the end of the project, or there could be a, uh, a proof of concept for future InfoPath replacement. At some point, all the InfoPath forms in the, in the company or organization have to be redone, but sometimes only one department's jumping ahead of other departments, you know, and not waiting for the whole corporate-wide initiative. So that's the kind of things that have to be considered with that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Let's talk about taking it step by step. And the reason for this is that uh, if you take on too much at once and it fails, then the whole project kind of, you know, goes into, uh, uh, you know, a tailspin there. So uh, it's important to take it uh, step by step so that you can you know, first try out, get a, maybe find a nice simple form that's, a, you know, like has good visibility and you think it could be really successful, you know, that's called toe in the water, then wait in slowly, revise that form, get it going, put it in the new system, try out some new cool features on it, you know, it should really be a showcase, and then after that you can move into dive right in once you kind of prove, you've proven your, uh, your uh, you know, capability to move off of InfoPath and you've proven that it's a plus and a positive for the company, then you go into that more full replacement uh, model there. We dive right in. That's after you gain some confidence, you know, you're ready to move forward with the full-scale conversion to production Nitro Studio Forms. And then you go at a pace that is appropriate for your organization, incorporating user feedback, you know, because it's an iterative process. But uh, the point we find is some people sometimes take on, you know, they're going to redo the whole everything at once or, you know, 20 forms at once or whatever, and it gets to be too much. You have to take this kind of incremental approach because it is uh, bringing in a new system uh, into the company. It's introducing it and introducing it kind of incrementally or slowly, you know, tone the water, wade in, then dive right in approach is a way to get it uh, the most successful you can then. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so these are some guidelines we offer, and you can adapt them to your project. Now, what I want to say is an InfoPath migration project is something that is very uh, idiosyncratic or unique to that particular organization. So what you have might not be with the guy next to you have or the woman next to you has. You know, it's, one, I mean, it's like 
there's a good number of people on this webinar, and every one of them probably has a different situation as far as what uh, the scope of the project, whether they have to adhere to regulatory demands, whether the users are flexible or not, you know, the culture of the organization, whether they're like gung-ho about change or very resistant to change, and all that determines how you approach the project. So these are guidelines are meant more for, you know, adapt them to your needs or to your particular situation. So the first step is catalog the forms to know what you have in place. Then you assess and analyze them to eliminate the unnecessary ones. And then you look at the effort to what it takes to replace the remaining forms, the ones that you've determined do need replacement. You can look at alternatives such as pre-built applications that may already fill the need. And then you go ahead and implement the new solution. So those first steps are important to know what you have, uh, get rid of, you know, decide not to or eliminate really the ones that are not uh, required anymore, they're outdated, and uh, look at how much it's going to take to replace these forms, uh, how much effort, approximately, somebody just have to estimate it, and look at alternatives, <clears throat> there may be pre-built applications, and then implement, uh, then go ahead and implement a new solution. So it's like taking a considered approach is a, is a good way of go, doing, a, doing it. So now we have the first step, like catalog the forms. What InfoPath forms do we have in place now? <clears throat> Now, there could be in a small situation where you know already, oh, we've got these five, that's it. You know, there's one for purchasing, there's one for deliveries, there's one for getting new equipment, I don't know, something like that. You, you know, you can so you can manually, like, catalog them manually in a spreadsheet. No big deal, don't have to make a big fuss about it. But you do want to know what you have, who's using it, is it, does it need to be replicated, and then track that. Attracted. Other people have literally thousands of these. Uh, we've seen average 50 to 100, but some people do have a 1,000 or more, and in that case, you really need to manage the project uh, in a much more um, systematic way. So, and uh, what we have here, what we're talking about on this slide, is, okay, first step is how do you get the catalog? Well, the cataloging of the forms, you can run a PowerShell script, and we can provide some coding that will help you with that. Uh, we, this is something, we have that for internal use, a PowerShell-like kind of commands, we can provide that information to you, and that will, uh, or it's available online too, I mean, but you know, we do have, we have worked with it where you run it against the farm or the tenancy and it will, uh, it will give you a list of the InfoPath forms that are there. And so now you have a list that you can work with. There's also some other free tools from like Rencore, I think Metalogic has a tool. So there's a number of tools out there that will read, uh, part, read the InfoPath forms you have in place and let you know what's there and uh, give you kind of an output of it. Uh, some of those other tools, Rencore and Metalogic do a lot more than just the InfoPath. They also do kind of analysis of the SharePoint environment and all that. But one part of it is getting this list of InfoPath forms. So you either just do it simply with an InfoPath, simply with an InfoPath, I mean with a PowerShell command. You can do it with a PowerShell command or uh, some scripting we can send you or one of these other tools. So now you have the catalog. You know, you, you get this list. And what we're talking about here about the next thing on this slide is Crow Canyon's InfoPath Replacement Manager. Well, what I'm talking about here is an is a version of a SharePoint application that we have that tracks that you know you use it to track the forms that you have to replace and all metadata about the form, such as who uses it, you know what group uses it, uh, who's the responsible people or parties, uh, what the purpose is, how often it is. So you know that each form it's kind of like asset management in a way. So we have this you know we have a help desk and asset management and quest management programs free built. So we just adapted one of those, you know, a combination of those to for this particular purpose of managing the forms. So you have a you have a InfoPath list of InfoPath forms with this metadata about each one, and then each one can uh, take off into a a project that will uh, track, you know, what's the status of it. You know, is it in design phase? Is it an implementation phase? Development phase? Well, I guess it'd be design, development, then in implementation, and um, what's the status, who's working on it, you know, how many hours it's taken, anything you want to track is possible. It's just a, a modification of an of existing uh, software we have. It's a pre-built application that we have like asset management and uh, help desk and request management and those kind of programs. We we turned it into an InfoPath replacement manager, as we call it, this application that we have. And you don't have to use that just with Nitro Studio. You know, if you're, if you're using some other tool to take your InfoPath forms from, uh, to uh, another solution, whether it's Nitro or whatever, you can use whatever you can use this InfoPath replacement manager application 
it does have a cost to it, but you can use this InfoPath Replacement Manager to track your forms and the projects of, of development and uh, where they are in their migration status and implementation status. Uh, kind of like if you can imagine, in a sense, it's like an asset management program where you're taking all these assets, in this case forms, and you're doing something like upgrading them. So it's the same kind of concept applied to InfoPath migration. So we do have that available. It helps you manage the project or replace InfoPath forms with status updates, notifications, approvals, subtasks, and other features. And then it helps you track the progress of the new solutions and implementations. Plus, after post-release of the new solution, you can also track any feedback or, or um, comments from users or, or further development, bug, bug fixes, or whatever needs to be done with it. You know, we uh, provide Nitro Studio, and we promote that, and there'll be a, a webinar uh, in February. Also, we have, yeah, anytime you want, you get a trial of Nitro Studio and start going with it. But this tool is meant for any any kind of info path replacement project, not just our studio. We may, And then same with this webinar, whole idea, these practices and principles are for the, uh, like, I'm not, but a high level of info path migration to help you get the confidence that you can do this and there's ways to do it and there's a methodology in, in how you do this. Okay, so in this way, um, that's the first step, catalog the forms. The next thing you wanna do is assess and analyze this catalog that you've got, eliminate the unnecessary ones and determine the effort to replace the remaining ones. So it really is important this, uh, if you can eliminate forms that you don't need to, to um, you know, replicate, you can look at their usage stats or something like that. I remember a Lotus Notes project we did where the guy, the, the people, the, com the group found that there was something like, I think he said 100,000 info, I mean, uh, 100,000 Lotus Notes applications. Because basically it's like anybody in the company could create an application just at the drop of a hat. So it ended up, and then they whittled it down to just 3,000 applications they had to migrate. Which, And I said, well, you're telling me just 3,000? I mean, he was happy because it wasn't 100,000, but still, that's a lot. Anyway, so you want to eliminate the unnecessary work, unnecessary forms, which eliminate, eliminates the work of migrating it over. Um, hopefully you can get your, you know, 1,000 down to 100 or something. I don't know, or maybe you can blind form. You know, really this, this analysis is important to, uh, you know, think about what these forms are doing and how they could be done differently and um, is it still serving any business point, purpose? Is, you know, whittling down the list will save you a lot of time and effort and no sense recreating forms that are not in use. Obvious stuff, but it's good to, to know that. And uh, in, in some days you have to explain that to end users, like even though they're in love with their form, but they haven't used it for two years. So, uh, uh, you know, it's like, hey, we're not gonna replicate it if you haven't used the, used the thing. In, a year or more, you know? so you have to like work with users on that and show that there's a cost benefit there of not not replicating it. Um, and then you have to look at the forms that are remaining and say, okay, how is it going to? How much effort is going to be to replace these forms? And every form's a little bit different. Form slash workflow is what I mean. Everyone's a little different. What's the complexity of it? What's the criticality? How important is it to the company? Is it a mission critical or is it just kind of a side project done by? you know, one department way out in the middle of nowhere. You know, what's the criticality? Or has there been a lot, have there been a lot of customizations done on it? What modifications and enhancements? So there's this thing of like, okay, we're gonna take this form, we look at each form workflow, InfoPath form workflow situation and say, how are we going to handle this? Uh, and then go through a methodology saying, well, this is fairly complex, or this one's fairly easy. This one is very critical, this one is not. This one has no customizations, this one has a lot. This one we can take as is and replicate it. This one we really want to consider move into our more mobile uh, or more database connectivity and modify it quite a bit and in a sense almost get to the point of reworking the whole process. So that's the kind of uh, thing you have to do to look at these forms. Now hopefully, or you know, if things are easy, you can just take the form point A and go to point B with it. Um, but a lot of times that's not the case at all and you have to really consider uh, and analyze what the form does and then uh, how much effort it's going to take to move over, move it over to a new solution. Now one other thing that can help a lot though is considering pre-built applications. Okay, I'm going to uh, you know, blow our horn a little here, toot our horn, because we do have these business applications available. And, and sometimes when we're doing these projects, we say, well, wait a minute. Why, why recreate a whole form workflow situation when the help desk will do it or the request management system that we already have will do it? So, uh, you know, that saves a lot of work because then you can just jump right in from whatever you were doing in InfoPath into something that is already pre-built, ready, pre-configured, totally vetted in use at a, hundreds of locations around the world. So, you know, fully supported by Crow Canyon. So why, 
why go through the uh, process of building something that already exists out there? It's not just, I mean, Crocan, you know, we're, I work with Crocan, and so we have a lot of products. I know them all by heart. Other companies are out there that do the, some similar things. I think we're one of the leaders in the, I mean, I know we are, one of the leaders in the SharePoint business applications, Office 365 business application world. So, um, of course, we're a good vendor to go with, but we do have, <laughs> obviously, I have to say that. We are the, uh, we have a lot to offer there. So these could be replacing the InfoPath uh, processes or tools that you have in use right now, the forms and workflows, and therefore makes it it, it uh, eliminates that whole need to recreate all the whole form for that particular solution inside of uh, in, inside of the new solution. You can just okay, we're going to replace InfoPath with this Crow Canyon application. It could save it could save substantial time and effort. So we want to put that out there and make the case uh, for that. Uh, then there's the process of implementing a new solution. So these are again just very high level, high level guidelines that uh, would really have to be adapted according to your your circumstances. If you did decide to go with a uh, building it using a tool like Nitro Studio, there wasn't a pre-built application that fit. You've talked to the users. You know what modifications you need. You've got approval to to go ahead with the project and everything. So this is where you would kind of a typical InfoPath replacement works something like this and it. Of course, this is, you know, can be adapted according to whatever your particular situation. So you set up a site and list with all the columns. You put the Nitro Studio in. You create a form. You add the workflows and custom actions. Maybe there's other features like print templates, email synchronizations, notifications, dashboards. You've got to test. You test the solution over and over. You know, make sure it's uh, and keep revising it in an iterative process to make sure it's going to uh, it's meeting the requirements or specifications that you have that it's able to. Um, uh, well, not only equal, but all exceed what you can do in InfoPath. Uh, and then, have, you know, make sure end users test it out. Again, that end user feedback is really critical. And test again before going to production. And then you're able to release it to production and, and direct users to the new solution. And, of course, continue to get their feedback and then move on. And once you have this process in place, it goes very kind of uh, quickly because you've done a lot of the preliminary work of cataloging the forms, assessing and analyzing which forms need to be moved over, you've looked at the effort required to move it, you got a really good handle, you look at pre-built applications, see if they can serve the need, and then you can just go ahead and, okay, we're going to go right ahead and um, make this new solution that replaces the InfoPath migration, and uh, that leads you to uh, success in the InfoPath migration, InfoPath replacement project. So that is a kind of a, that's our best practices, uh, you know, summary here. We do have the uh, okay, we're going to go into Nitro Studio in a moment, but we, I'm going the wrong way, let me go back. The best practices hopefully will help you uh, in the, you know, raise some questions, help you uh, consider how you're going to move forward with it, how you're going to do it. But again, I'll go back to the first two principles, which is the time is now, don't wait. Uh, it's 2020. The, uh, the mainstream, mainstream support ends in 2021, July 2021, and it does take time for all these InfoPath uh, forms to be moved over for users to adapt, for the organization to move uh, forward, and also the next principle of stop creating InfoPath forms and uh, look to the new solutions and find one that's going to work. So that's the part about the best practices. Now I'm going to jump into the uh, uh, talking about Nitro Studio. Why is Nitro Studio a good replacement for InfoPath? Um, you know, this is the the part about Nitro Studio, and like I said, we're going to also go into this in much more depth inside of the uh, inside of the uh, webinar on February 13th. Uh, right now, I'll stop a second though and ask Jocelyn, who's uh, uh, helping me with this, if there's any questions. Jocelyn, any questions come up? Sure. Hi, folks. This is Jocelyn. Yeah, we've had two questions, and I haven't wanted to interrupt you, but we are. Um, one question is: Is can you quickly say when is InfoPath uh, phasing out completely? What's the date? InfoPath mainstream, well, it depends if it's InfoPath 2010 or 2013, but let's assume 2013. Mainstream support ends in July of 2021. That's mainstream okay. support. Okay. So that means like, uh, you know, well, mainstream support, obviously knows what that means. So that's a year and a half. Uh, the extended support is 2026. Now, okay. can you keep using InfoPath for the rest forever? I guess you could if you keep having the servers that will support it, like, you know, but eventually uh, it's just, like I said in one of the slides earlier, organizations will want to move off of it because they're missing a lot of the newer technologies 
so the, the time is now to take advantage of the mo mobile and cloud and connectivity um, advantages that are with a newer solutions that are built in the for the 2020 world not for the the world back in you know the 2003 to 2013 when the, you know like I said the iPhone only came out in 2007 and from that it's been a revolution in terms of the technology and how much that is so important to uh, organizations in the workplace and if you have a use an infopath with not even uh, you know dialed into to that kind of technology you're really you know pretty much behind the eight ball in terms Absolutely. of what your competitors are able to do so is there another question there was one other question so back when we were talking about the migration um, from infopath and what that would take uh, one of the folks asked is um, when we're talking about what what kind of elements would be involved in that migration, what about fields, calculations, and uh, button logics made within InfoPath? How will those be treated as editable or migratory items? Right, right, right. Those things, that's like I say, those all have to be recreated inside of the new solution. The advantage is if you have the InfoPath uh, solution already in place, you know the good and bad and the ugly of it because it's been in use. So you can say, okay, we're going to take the parts that are relevant and recreate them in the Nitro Studio. The bad stuff, the ugly stuff, we're going to leave off and maybe do something different. We're going to add these modifications and enhancements. So the logic is there in the sense that if you push this button, it sends a notification to, to the manager, you know, for example. Or, or if you push this button, it generates a document or it updates a database. So the logic is there in the sense that you know it, but you have to recreate it in the new solution. Uh, and you know, you may adapt the the logic. You may adapt the the process, the workflow. There may be new things you can do because now you have a mobile device and you didn't before. You know, things like that. Or sure. maybe you use a portals instead of a straight out form. I mean, all kinds of possibilities that change it. But you know, the essential logic. You know, um, it's like this. If I, you know, if I'm going to the store, I open the door, go out the go out to my car, and turn on the key. But the thing is, it may be different because now with a new car, it's maybe I go out and I push the button to start the car. It's still the idea of, you know, starting, yeah, I know the logic of it, but the technology is different. It used to be, right. you know, like the older cars have keys, and nowadays a lot of cars, when I ran them, they have these push buttons. So it's sort of like a new technology that is the same idea, but new, done in a different way. That's, I hope that analogy makes sense. So if, if there's any other questions, folks, please send them my way. Um, and uh, in the meantime, Scott, let's, let's move on to Nitro Studio. Why Nitro Studio is the solution. Right, right, and remember, everyone will get a recording, and also the ebook uh, is available, which has a you know extended version of this information in it. And of course, we're always here to help and advise and uh, and uh, you know talk to you about uh, what we can do with with uh, InfoPath migration. We really see ourselves as like helping everybody get off InfoPath to our solution. It's not only that we want to sell Nitro Studio, it's just, you know, we, we just want to, we've been in this community for over 20 years and we see a lot of people at the shows and, and it's just, uh, you know, we're deep into it and we want to help people get off of the info path uh, to a new solutions and see you utilize these new technologies that are out there to improve their business processes. Okay, so what do we do at Nitro Studio? Why use Nitro Studio? Well, it's a comprehensive, powerful, easy, simple, and affordable. Well, that's, that's a lot to say right there, isn't it? So it, it's, we built Nitro Studio as a foundation for our business applications. And as we went along, we realized that it really could be adapted as a tool and a platform in and of itself. And in and of itself, um, it, it became, uh, people started asking for the studio, the Nitro Studio as a tool uh, that could be standalone so they can start building their applications. Then after that, as InfoPath got de deprecated more and more, uh, more and more, you know, the time frame for it came more and more, uh, uh, you know, uh, current, we uh, productized it, I guess you could say, or made it so available to people who want to use the Nitro Studio uh, as a tool to build their own applications. It's comprehensive, powerful, and that's because we built it on the SharePoint on-premises and Office 365 environment, easy and simple, because we wanted to keep a no-code solution going. And we wanted to make it so affordable, so people, we know there's some high price solutions out there, I won't name them, but you guys know who they are. That uh, that seem like out of the price range of many uh, small to medium range companies, and you know if you're not a large large enterprise, maybe you don't want to invest that kind of hundreds of thousands of dollars into some kind of solution. But you do need to have a solution to move off of uh, and to put in place. So let's uh, let's go to the next slide here. Come on, okay. 
Okay, nice to easy to transition. It's, it's a full application creation suite. As I said, we built it specifically for SharePoint and Office 365 as a forms designer. It has a workflow engine and many other tools, a complete set of tools, no code, WYSI WYSI form designer, and many advanced features. The Nitro forms themselves, and again, I'll go, we'll go into this more detail either with you individually and show you it, or uh, in the webinar, or however you want to take it, do a trial. But we have all these capabilities built into it, dynamic forms, responsive design, portable templates, linked items, repeating rows, custom actions, portal interfaces, database integration, electronic signatures, and more. That's in our forms using the WYSIWYG form designer with options for tabs, sections, themes, custom buttons, permissions, and a really very powerful tool to build the forms that you need and uh, replace those InfoPath ones. We also have a workflow and custom actions engine that drive business processes. They can use for uh, approvals, escalations, auto assignment, task management, notifications, I and mean, many, many, many possibilities. The workflows run on timer or uh, system generated events or custom actions give the users the power to, you know, they can initiate a process by pressing a button. Say you want to escalate uh, the ticket or you want to move it ahead or generate a document or generate a PO or generate an input or, um, or approve a request, you know, all these action buttons that move the, the process along and help automate it. We also have a lot else in uh, Nitro Studio, including uh, portals, reports and dashboards, AI services. Yes, we do have AI services like chatbots. You can format the list. We have a lot going on with email as a communication tool between the end user and the uh, staff uh, in terms of keeping a history of the record of what emails are associated with each item, each ticket, each request each approval. We can synchronize by sending in emails and having them converted to requests, converted to tickets. Um, there's uh, list roll-ups, list search, list view, modern UI, print manager, many, many capabilities. And it's really uh, what we use to build our applications. And also many people use this to build applications in their environments in the SharePoint on-premises 2013, 2016, 2019, or Office 365. Very, very powerful set of tools. And it can easily uh, meet the needs to replace InfoPath replacement. I mean, replace InfoPath uh, um, forms and workflows with, with, with this. It brings you all the features you need as advanced form designer, powerful engine, mobile integration. That's a very important part. We have a lot of mobile integration, um, responsive design, integrates with emails and databases. It's, uh, it's available in the modern or classic UI. So what I want to do now is just take one moment to segue over to show you. Uh, we've got like five or ten minutes I guess left so if you want I'll, I'll go over to here and show you just what the Nitro Studio looks like but again this is gonna be something we go into either individually or in that webinar coming up in February uh, so here's an access request system here when you open up a, a new item just as a simple example of a form you can uh, open it up and see the the Nitro forms design uh, here this is a very simple one and it has, uh, you know, drop lists and user info fillers and different sections and different associated items. It can do stuff like uh, if you choose a certain um, uh, things, it opens up the certain, you know, selections. It opens up, it's dynamic, in other words. It opens up different parts of it. It's very simple. I also can show you, uh, uh, okay, that's, that's like one example of the form with custom buttons and you can do other things. The studio itself, is uh, what runs that of this access request system. Again, you have the forms where you design the forms. So if I open up the Nitro Forms Designer, I go here and can design this access request form we just looked at. And there's many possibilities with the, what, what controls are on there, what actions are on there, what uh, different, you, how you put a autofill, lookup, associate item, external data, signature pads. It's all part of the WYSIWYG Forms Designer that's part of Nitro. Uh, there's also column permissions. You can put your own custom JavaScript. You can have form. I mean, it gets. It can be either simple or complex, depending on how you what your needs are. And we adapt this. First, we build our own, and now we're as we get deeper and deep, deeper into an InfoPath replacement, uh, um, you know, world where it add more and more features that completely. Uh, completely match what InfoPath can do. So, you know, if you do have a question about can you do that in Nitro Studio, go ahead and ask it. If we don't have it, which is likely we do, but if we don't, uh, then we can always look at developing it and making it uh, part of Nitro Forms Designer. Uh, that's just Scott, one part question. of that. Two yeah. questions oh. came up as you're in this view. Uh, one person has asked, can you hide the top save, cancel, paste menu? Is that an option for Where's that? how Nitro Studio is designed? You mean up here? 
Save I believe cancel. back in your forms view. Oh. When creating a new item, actually. Yeah, you can do. Yeah, you know, we mean the ribbon up here. Oh, so this part. I'd have to ask the dev team about how much they can hide of the ribbon, but we we know I know we can add uh, items to the ribbon. I don't know if we can just subtract the standard ones from it. We okay. if we do a custom action up here, it could be like escalate this or approve this or or move it, you know, whatever. We add uh, icons to this ribbon. Um, Jocelyn, make a note about, and we'll get back about it, whether you can delete. No one's ever asked sure. that actually. If you can well, delete I think that the or... point. I think the point of this person is is they they're wondering as a way to make it feel more like a system and less like SharePoint, so it has takes on that UI effect. Right, right, right. And this is where we we'll need to talk about the portal. Uh, mm -hmm. And the portal is something that let's see if I can find a, a good portal. I wasn't meant to do this in this uh, webinar, but I'll see if I can jump over to one right now. See, this is a portal design. When you open up a new request. This is what I meant about the portal, and really, uh, we do have a portal webinar we did. Also, we can show it to you individually. But the idea here is that this is complete. This is part of part of SharePoint, but now we've completely done it in a, in a view where there is no uh, of the standard SharePoint functionality. I think this would satisfy his needs, don't you, Jocelyn? Yes, yeah, I absolutely do. Sorry, going in right. and out of so, me. <laughs> so that's exactly the purpose of the portal: is to give users a simplified which is part of Nitro Studio, by the way, the employee self-service portal, part of Nitro Studio. We give them this nice, easy-to-use interface with simplistic design uh, so that they can come in and not be distracted by any of these other buttons and whatnot that's part of SharePoint. Yes, exactly why we did this is get away from that SharePoint, SharePoint-y view of things. And this can be done, hey, you put your own logo here. I mean, I, I could give a whole webinar on the portal, and I won't right now because it's already, you know. Yeah, I I have a few but more questions for you back in the um, yeah. in the forms area. So, I, actually, this is more generic. So, does database integration include the ability to query uh, for and fill fill in fields from ODBC data connections to find and reach for Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, as long okay. as it's an accessible database and you have the permissions, absolutely. There's okay, a whole great. external data column. You know, I could show that if the if the uh, if uh, the person wants to see, you know, the questioner wants to see this, uh, we can show that, like, you know, either individually or whatever. But yeah, we'll follow up in an email with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. then another question is, is will will people still have access to the SOAP calls that, uh, like, we can um, in InfoPath, etc.? Will the SOAP SOAP calls be going away? Uh, I that's a little beyond my my capability. So let's ask yeah. the dev team on that one. All right. Okay. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't know I'll write off. I know we have uh, the ability in our workflow manager or our custom actions to uh, use the REST APIs to to bring in or interact with data and other systems. If we put right. a custom action in uh, here, if I went into the custom actions, you can see one of the custom actions uh, possibilities in our Nitro Studio is to interact with REST, which is, I, as far as I, I'm sorry if I don't know this in detail, but it's somewhat related to SOAP or you know making these requests over the uh, internet. And, right. And, you know. um, okay, so then uh, there are questions about pricing that are coming up and I would encourage people to go to the pricing yeah. page and we're gonna well, we'll, be doing we'll individual follow-ups of folks. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk individually about those because it really depends on the situation and the, uh, right. the requirements mm -hmm. and all that that's going on. Um, um, right. Yes. And then let's see, <laughs> I love it. These questions are coming fast and furious. So then we have, yeah. um, let's see. Well, hold uh, on one second, Jocelyn. I want to show sure. about how we can invoke a web service or workflow. We can also invoke Microsoft flows from our custom mm -hmm. actions. So okay. if you are using, well, now I'll call it Power Automate, but you can invoke workflows. You can press the button, which will invoke either a SharePoint workflow, one of our Crow Canyon workflows, or a Microsoft, well, now Power Automate workflow. So you can actually, uh, run a, a flow in the middle of uh, one of our forms. You can do that. You can also go out and invoke web services if you know the, uh, the REST API calls. And this this is like kind of like emulates the premium connectors that are, are available and paid for in Flow or Power Automate. You have to pay for those premium connectors. As long as you know the REST API uh, coding from the uh, provider like Salesforce or something like that, you or Dropbox, you can put that methodology in and then have it uh, uh, um, have it make that call and make that integration with that without requiring the premier connectors of uh, flow. 
so I just want to make that point. If anyone is on that technical level, that that should be of interest to them. Okay. Okay, and then well, actually, and um, someone's asking how many connectors are available with the nitro form. But you many just you pretty much answered it, yeah. Many as you right. want. I mean, we we don't have we have some pre-built like with the database connectors, but others are just a matter of getting the rest the rest API info. And of course, our dev team can work with you to make that happen. Many of the providers, QuickBooks, Dropbox, everybody else will provide that information as part of their their SDKs, you know, and, and it's, a, it's just really just an open API that we can connect with by using that invoke web service. So, when, you know, you press the button and something happens in connecting with that system and making either a call to it, reading information, writing information, updating, you know, something in QuickBooks or pulling, in, you know, all course with the right permissions and connectivity, you know, all that, right? Sure. Uh, one person's asking, will Nitro Performs work with Nintex workflow? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, we could, we could, uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's possible, okay. especially the portal. I mean, really, once the form puts the, the, um, it's a data input screen, you know, with a lot of capabilities of making a nice, pretty interface or a nice, attractive or nice, useful, I guess is a better word, interface for the users, whether you use our form like I showed you, an access request form, or you're using our portal form. This portal form is highly, uh, highly flexible as to what, how you present it. Also, it's available in the modern UI, too, not just in, um, not just in, a, in, a, in the classic here. This is a classic one, but we have it in the modern UI also. And I'm sure once you submit it, and the, the ticket is submitted, the request is submitted, then that workflow runs independent of the form because that's a process that the system has recognized something's been created in this list. Do I need to do anything? You know, and if it's an Nintex workflow, we'll run that. If it's a SharePoint workflow, we'll run that. If it's a Crow Canyon workflow, we'll run that. So, you know, it definitely can interact like that. Okay. You want some more questions, Scott? Or we're well, wrapping, we're, we're going well, on a little th bit. One thing I want to show people before I go is we do have this form showcase on our website. And I want to show you the kind of forms we can create. Now, this might be a little small, but these are the kind of forms we can create in Nitro. I mean, it's not just that simple form I was just showing you. You know, it's all kinds of capabilities of creating these very uh, complex forms that meet, you know, government requirements or whatever. Uh, these are forms that we have. These are just some examples of what we have created. You see all the different signature boxes, the different layouts, and this, you know, can be much more colorful. It can have your own logo on it, of course. Uh, you know, things like this. It can be dynamic. It can show up on the web, on a mobile. These are this is I mean, even stuff like this is pretty cool. You know, and again, it could have your own logo, your own design. Uh, we're doing working a lot with school districts and government agencies that have certain forms they need. Like here's a W. This is a Nitro form, believe it or not. This W4 is done in Nitro. You know, this is a Nitro form right here. I mean, we did it to show what the capabilities of Nitro is, uh, what they, those capabilities are. Here is some other form like this. So anything you want to do and, you know, pretty much, you know, give us the challenge and we'll, we'll make it happen. Here's a travel expense form. Uh, um, someone's a, asking, can they see a modern UI form? Yeah, I don't, um, do we have that in the form showcase? Uh, they really don't look that different than what they are there. I mean, yeah, it's, I was uh, going to say, we haven't differentiated because they're Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, this this should be um, uh, mobile friendly. See, when you shrink down the design, this is mobile friendly, uh, you know, modern, uh, modern design there. And if you did cancel it, you'd see like the mobile mobile capabilities of it. See, this is, you know, responsive design there. So same with the modern UI, whether you use the classic or modern, they're both responsive. But we can show that to somebody who wants to, you know, definitely demonstrate that, uh, you know, like I said, I, I was focusing more on best practices of InfoPath migration. And it's really a matter of assessing where people are at. Or are you just considering, is it possible? Can I do this? Now you're starting to consider where Nitro Studio is the right tool. And then we get down into these kind of questions, and that's hopefully what we'll take up as we interact with people individually and all that. Uh, what other questions, Jocelyn? Jocelyn? So let's see. So I'm sorry, I didn't, know, I didn't realize that. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I'll just throw a few others out at you. Oh, oh uh, wait a minute. I see one. Sorry to interrupt. I see one. Compare this to Power Apps and can integrate with sure. Power Platform. Yeah. Those are great questions, and we will compare, do a comparison in our March webinar on the limitations of and cost of the Power Platform. Hey, we go to all these shows, SharePoint shows, and Fast and everything all the time, and all the all the sessions are about Power App, Power App Pass. All you hear is Power Platform, Power. 
but there's also like an undercurrent of like, hey, the, you know, even though Microsoft promotes it so aggressively and, and ambitiously, there is a sort of um, underbelly of it that you want to consider in terms of limitations and in terms of the cost of, of, of implementing the Power Platform. It's, uh, it's got a lot of use in a lot of cases, but there's some places where, many places where it's just overboard, it's hard to develop, it's, it's costly. And, and think about Nitro Studio, we price it per, uh, you know, you, you get it for the whole, the whole site or the whole tenant or whole farm or whatever. And we don't care how many workflows and forms, we don't count those, but the other ones will start to charge you per form, per, form, per workflow, per this, per that. You know, we only price it per user. How large is your organization? Once you get in place, use it uh, for as many places as you want. So it's very much a more of a cost controlled, cost contained solution also. Uh, but at the same time, we do integrate with the, uh, with the Power Platform. Uh, we had a webinar about, a, what, last April I think it was called Flow, when the time it was called Microsoft Flow, now it's Power Automate, and Nitro, best friends forever, BFF. It's on our webinar page, and we show how, in like I showed you earlier in the custom actions, you can come here to custom actions, and you can go and evoke a Microsoft Flow. So, you know, if you do have something you want to do in Flow, you do a custom action, push the button, and this what, what we're showing in one of these systems in that webinar is that you could have like a document written out to Dropbox using Flow. So, you approve it, the person has taken the course or whatever, and now they get a certificate, you know, generate document. That's what our um, our uh, workflow right here would generate a document, a PDF, and then you could take that document, which is an attachment on the on the access request system, and move it over to to uh, to uh, to uh, Dropbox. I wonder if we if we have that going here still in this access request system. That was a little while ago. So that's it. What? Do we allow? Um, is it easy to have external user access? That depends on whether you're on shared by on-premises or Office 365. There is, there are some questions, and it's whether that person, whether those people are on Office 365 or whether they're, there are, uh, they are, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in a, a completely different system with no login and no content. You know, it's that's a question that would have to be answered depending on the circumstances of that external user in the in the requirement. You know, okay. we're jumping around a lot, but you could say, like, see, right here, you can say generate the document, which would generate uh, the, the certificate of access right here, you know, access request, and they got a certificate of access, and then it would move that attachment over to OneDrive using Flow. This uses Crocanius custom actions entirely. This uses our custom actions with Microsoft Flow, invoking that Flow or Power Automate in order to move it over to OneDrive. We now have the capability to do that without Flow by writing a REST API, but you know, if you do have a Flow con connector already and you want to use it, you can uh, just uh, put this button to make it happen on the Nitro form. Okay, what else is going on? Um, uh, let's see, uh, around views. How oh, many oh. views okay, go can ahead, you sorry. create per form? Views per form? Well, depend. Uh, you can, in can a you, one site, in one list, you create as many view, many forms as you want. Depend, and you can depend on what user it is or what what. Uh, I mean, it it really the forms are very dynamic. And you know, I don't know if there's any limit per se, but there's there's ability to create different forms for different users and different views for different users, different user groups, and things like that. One other question I see right here is parent-child. Yes, we definitely have parent-child. I see it right here. These associated tasks are part of this access request. So the person had an access request. Now somebody else has, is given an assignment to give permission. Somebody else has given an assignment to update the database, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you can do all kinds of complex um, parent-child relationships with that, okay? Okay. What else, Jocelyn? So, I, uh, let's see. So, um, speaking of kind of jumping around a little bit, can you create? Can you create parent-child relationship forms? Oh yeah, I just answered that. That's where this oh, uh, associated task will do it. So, if I open up this task, it's a task in and of itself, a child of the parent access request. And what it does is it, it says this: somebody's been assigned this task of giving permission to, to the database. So it's part of it's part of this larger task, a larger uh, access request system. And then when editing the form in Nitro Studio, there was an option for different views depending on a new view, edit, what have you. So can you set specific case views? Let's say when the approver goes into it, will it show approval view? When anyone else tries to modify it, will go into access denied view, for example? Yeah, we can do that. It's a little, uh, you know, 
I didn't set up this webinar with all those capabilities to show it, but I certainly show mm -hmm. it in an individual demo, or I'll try I'll try and incorporate that into the webinar in February. That's a month out, so if you don't, I'd rather you know get the conversation yeah. going sooner if we can and arrange a one on one. But I would say yes, that Definitely. is possible. That is and possible. so I'll say that I'll say to all that we are definitely planning on doing individual follow-ups with you. If you have more questions, we'll be happy to answer them and set up a time. Scott, do you mind also showing the website where we have the uh, training videos and tutorials so that folks can take a look at some of the specific bits and pieces or yes. components that are incorporated? Yes. Okay, we have, of course, a list of all the applications. We have those are those pre-built ones that maybe would uh, suffice for an InfoPath replacement. You don't need to go to a... Uh, Build it yourself. You can just adapt one, adopt, adapt one of these for the purpose. We have all this information on Nitro Studio, including the components, the form showcase, pricing, resources. We have a whole section on InfoPath replacement and a bunch of resources, blogs, and all this. Um, as far as the uh, resources here, we have a set of resources for Nitro. We've done a number of these webinars. We infographics. We've done um, presentations that shows. I'm giving a talk actually at the San Diego show, which is a week from Saturday. If anybody's in the San Diego area, there's a San Diego SharePoint Saturday coming up, and a number of other ones. Well, let's see, we're going to be at San Diego, then there's one in Branson, no, there's one in Redmond, then one in Branson, Missouri, North American Collaboration Summit, there's a SharePoint Fest in D.C. we'll be at, there's a Houston SharePoint Saturday in April, there's a show in Dallas in April, and of course the big Vegas show in May, we'll be at all those. So quite a busy uh, travel schedule coming up. So we interact with people, you know, talk to people individually. We're just in Chicago in December. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, so uh, there's posts, case studies, um, frequent asked questions. I think you were asking about, oh, the form showcase. You were asking about the video library. That's right here. Uh, we have a number of these, uh, you know, webinars we've done in the past and, and the current ones. Focus this about InfoPath replacement. We did one with Joel Olson um, talking about issues paralyzing your migration from InfoPath and how to get over it. We have, I also uh, encourage people to take a look under the support and training. You'll see right here the additional videos. We have some training, training videos, videos that yes. will be able to answer a lot of your questions as it pertains specifically to Nitro Forms. And so they go, they're shorter videos, but they go into a little bit more detail about bits and pieces to what you're talking about as well. But again, I think that the greatest solution here would be doing a one-on-one -on -one conversation with us. Yes, yes, that always works better because everybody's situation is a little different. Now, Nitro Studio is not just InfoPath replacement. It can be used just, you know, if you don't have any InfoPath forms at all or you have access forms, it doesn't really matter. It can be used from scratch. You know, we did a paper form. We took a paper form for the school district and turned it into a, a Nitro form, and they were uh, – they were uh, – uh, they were, you know, moved from paper to the to uh, our Nitro Studio form. And I was just reading this other question about can the forms be used as a content types? Yeah, yeah, we we'll, we'll, we can talk about what that means, and you know, those, that's, that'd be good to have a conversation. So let's let's talk about that individually with someone, you know, the person asking, and uh, get to that. So I'm really glad to see there's so much interest in this, and I and we know that there people are really looking, and and it seems to be like they're moving from 2019 was more like should I do this, can I do it? Now we're moving more into what tool to I know I have to do it, what tool do I have to? You know, it's like I know I have to get a new car. You know, I know I have to replace InfoPath. What, which one do I want? It's no longer thinking I should do this. I should someday in the future. Now the time is now. Is people are seem to have uh, incorporated that message and are moving forward. So we're helping you with the hoping that you know with our Nitro Studio, our information, this webinar, these two ones coming up, we're able to help uh, help show you some possible uh, ways to go forward with it. So we have this automate business processes with Nitro Forms and workflows coming up in February, and we have this limitations and costs of using Microsoft Power Platform and in March, I'll, I'll be giving both of them, and you can sign up for them at this crowcan.com slash webinars. If you can't actually make it to it, uh, one of these, uh, we can always send you out the recording. Uh, and uh, and then also we'll be at, like I said, some of these shows starting um, more, more commonly in March and April. And if you can make it to that, in fact, if anyone can, is, is going to Branson, we have some free passes. I don't know if we gave them all out, but contact us and let us know if you want to go to Branson. Uh, Missouri for the North American Collaboration Summit on April 2nd and 3rd. Uh, we do get some passes for that. So, uh, you know, good to stay in touch and keep the uh, emails going, the blogs, and a conversation going, and then uh, see, uh, you know, see if our solution will really fit your needs. And uh, we're finding it does in a lot of cases, but it's always good to talk about, you know, the exact specifics. And then, um, 
find out how we can do it. We, we find this subject really fascinating and interesting, and it's really exciting uh, to take on these challenges of moving from InfoPath to Nitro Studio, what's involved, what, everybody's different, every situation's different, every circumstance, so it's, it's really a, a lot of fun and a lot of interest, and hopefully you'll get in touch with us and, and we'll have a bit more of a conversation and see if we can help you move forward with your InfoPath replacement project. Thank you for attending. And as Jocelyn's been saying, we will answer other questions. We'll be talking to people uh, through email or, or perhaps phone calls individually about some questions. And hopefully we'll have some follow-up on it. And maybe we'll see you either through a live demo, a trial, at a show, or at these upcoming webinars. I want to thank everyone for attending and have a, have a great day the rest of the day. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, uh, everyone.